I am Cora Berry and today I'm going to be walking you through everything you need to know about competitions and getting prepared for them. So we're going to run through some of the criteria, some of the competitions you should enter for your level, as well as some tips and tricks to help get you started. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is a competition and why should we enter? So competitive cosplay is a great way for you to showcase your hard work and they can take place online or at events. These competitions are more often than not designed for costumes you've made yourself or if you haven't, they're a good way to showcase a skip. So that's, that's the general gist of it. So here comes the next questions. So which competitions should you enter? So they normally are broken down into three categories of parades. So they are walk-on style events where you may not necessarily need to do a skit or even make your costume. They are there purely to showcase what you've done. Um, after that, we've got our basic competitions. So they are going on, you may be talking to a judge, you may be um, performing a skit. They come in a range of different shapes and sizes, um, but that's your basic competition. Those, that level is where you are getting prizes handed out. And then you've got international competitions where you go and represent Australia. So good examples of this in Australia is Cosplay Odyssey, which is currently on hiatus, um, and WCS, which is going online this year. Uh, we also have formerly had the Championships of Cosplay um, as well, and that's another craftsmanship based one um, that was had the ability to be entered in the past. And that's your general breakdown. So let's figure out which, co which of these competitions you should enter. Okay, so now you get mini me. Ooh. Uh, so we're going to actually go through some of the competitions um, that do exist here in Australia and we're going to see if um, they're right for you in any way, shape or form. So let's have a quick look. So we're going to start with Supernova. Okay, so here is the cosplay page for Supernova. So we are going to have a quick look at some of their events uh, for Melbourne, which is happening, I believe, this weekend as well. Um, so Odyssey, as I mentioned before, it's currently on hiatus, um, just because of the international restrictions going on. That's their, normally their super high tier, um, competition. That's very craftsmanship based. And then we've got their just general cosplay competition. We've got their kids cosplay parade. So for any people with smaller humans out there, uh, that one's for you. Uh, so let's have a quick look at their general cosplay showcase. So here we go. So this is a quick rundown of the event. So what is it? The Supernova Cosplay Showcase is a blend of our Cosplay Odyssey cosplay competition and Cosplay Dash events. So they've kind of put all three together for this one. Um, wear your best costume, strut your stuff, and strike a pose. So yeah, all pretty, all pretty standard, all pretty straightforward. Um, so in this particular case, so there is no skits or performances for it, solo or group. Um, Groups are a max of four people. I'm guessing that might be COVID restriction. Um, no bought costumes at all. Uh, so normally when you enter competitions, you aren't allowed just in general to enter bought costumes. And the only category that they are eligible for in, in regards to prizes and things like that is normally just the skit category. If you've bought your costume, the only prize you are eligible for is the skit category, unless otherwise specified. Um, Lucky Ancients will be randomly selected to win double pass um, of future double pass to a future supernova event. Uh, just speaking um, from uh, from past history, supernova's comps always fill up really quickly. So I do recommend that if you do enter any of the supernova uh, competitions, that yeah you register as soon as they announce. Um, and sometimes people will um, not show up on the day, but it's really really unlikely so as i mentioned yeah just to go sign up um and all of their all of their dates and everything here make sure you do sign up before the deadline um nothing more annoying for anyone managing cosplay events than uh the person that wants to sign up the day before or two minutes before the competition it, it drives it drives them crazy so please don't do that <laughs> um so with most events you will also need to Make sure you are at their cosplay desk before 12. So if you don't know where that is, try and find it as early on, check their show map, ask around, get there. You need to get there and you need to make sure that you register 
um, that you are in the event. It's not enough to just come to the event. So what normally will happen with competitions is they will have a certain amount of people uh, that have signed up. And then when those people, if they don't show up to um, registration, then they put other people in their place. So just make sure that when you are going through and you are um, checking, uh, doing all your checklists for the day, just make sure that going in and signing, signing in takes two seconds uh, is on that list. So also make sure you attend marshalling. You can be cut from a competition by not attending marshalling. Uh, even if you have signed up, even if you have um, signed in, you can be kicked from the event if you are not there by the time the event starts. Um, so most of this is all pretty, pretty standard. Um, so make sure, yeah, before you enter the event, check out the weapons policy. Um, and yeah, no, no skits, no performances. Um, there is cosplay repair in most places as well. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so everything for this particular um, event has been filled. Let's see if I can find a registration form um, on this Sunday for you, just so you can have an idea on what you'd need to submit. Uh, so yeah, so your name, your, yep, your name. Um, so most, most of the time you can go in with an alias. Um, and if you can, yeah, it's great. It's always good fun. Um, so mine obviously is Cora Berry. So I'm just gonna type in here. I'm, I'm gonna just pretend to fill out this form. So yeah, I'm 10. Uh, and yeah, so uh, from here, you will need to put in the character name, where, where the character is from, um, if you're part of a group or if you made it by yourself or any other requirements. So this is really important, especially if you have any um, like issues. So if you are on a costume with wheels, for example, uh, or it's really big and heavy, uh, specify here that you need a ramp or something. They do need to know that like well in advance. Um, and yeah, so here is where you can basically showcase what your, co your costume is all about. Um, so normally you've got about 30 seconds. So pick the three most, I always say pick the three most impressive um, points to put in this section that the MC can talk about with you. So sometimes this is number of hours put in, like highlighting one key aspect um, of a costume, for example, uh, like with one of mine, it, uh, so on a dress that I made, it uh, changed color. So that was something cool that I would have mentioned in this section. And then obviously, yeah, agreeing to all the rules and conditions. So that's a general general idea on what supernova's competitions look like. Let's have a quick look at Comic-Con. Okay, so this is Cosplay Active. Let's just see. Do, do, do. Features, features, here we go, cosplay. Um, so it's only cosplay active at the moment. Uh, so normally they have, um, normally they have a parade as well. So the parade is normally uh, for Comic-Con, you sign up on the day. So you go to Cosplay Central, sign up, and first and best dressed. So if you wanna be part of that, where you walk on, pose, walk off, then parade, perfect place to start. And yeah, you need to sign up on the day for that one. Um, so this is, uh, active is definitely for more mainstream competitors. So this will be really similar to um, what Supernova has, but at the moment, so yeah, so skits, um, skits are optional for anyone participating in the competition. Um, so most of the time there will be a time limit on skits. So for this one, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more, just so you guys can maybe see that a bit more. Do I need to zoom in? Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so normally, um, normally skits are like have a bit of a uh, restriction on timing. So normally two minutes. Uh, you can email in and you can ask, hey, can I have, um, can I have a little bit longer uh, for X Y Z reasons? Sometimes they will let you. Sometimes they won't. There's no harm in emailing and asking first. Um, but most of the time, it's a hard cut off. There is a lot of people in these events and they do want to make sure that you can 
you know, you, you can all be get up on stage within the allocated time limit because normally there's scheduling that happens straight after. So running over is not really a good idea for, um, for events. So with all skits, there's always going to be a lot of restrictions with them. Uh, so most events, Supernova and Comic-Con, they are, they are family events. So keep the skits PG, um, no acrobatics, no water sparkles, anything that can like leave damage or that can cause a lot of cleanup on stage really, um, or cause any hazards on stage. No acro acrobatics, even for an act acrobat, no, it's, it's not good. So, so some of these temporary staging, it's not ideal to have acrobatics performed on them. Um, you can have, uh, if you wish to have any background music or other audio played on stage during your performance, um, and prior to the event and you need to supply music at least one week before the event. So with a lot of events like active, so they ask you to supply the audio in advance because they need to listen to it and they need to make sure it works. Um, because it's important to also not have anything inappropriate or with lots of swearing or anything. And a lot of events will require pre-recorded content. Uh, some events, I think Avcon still let you perform live um, with a handheld microphone, um, but it does need to be pre-approved. I believe so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so yeah, so this one, uh, th this is all pretty standard and pretty straightforward. Costumes cannot promote alcohol, illegal drugs, tobacco, firearms, weapons, um, any activities that appear unsafe or dangerous for any um, particular po political agenda or message. Um, Costumes cannot be obscene or offensive or endorse uh, any form of hate or group. Um, yeah, so this is this is a basically, um, this is pretty standard as well. As I mentioned before, bought, bought costumes are permitted. However, you will only be eligible for the best skit award. So, um, and this is a restriction on some events, but not all events. So any costumes you, um, you have won, that have won awards at any events will not be eligible for prizes. Um, and don't try and sneak by this. I've seen people try and enter the same costume in like 20 different events. Uh, we all, like most of the judges and most of the community know one another and they know when you've entered the costume in multiple events. And if the event's okay with that, great. But um, try not to be sneaky about it. We do know, we do talk. I constantly stalk the results of, um, the results of, cosplay competitions so that's one person okay cool so either way uh hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea let's have a look at avcon so avcon is an adelaide based event really fun i do recommend going the caliber of costume in adelaide is like moi it's so good it's so good and it terrifies me to enter and I won a competition in Adelaide, I've won Avcon one year, and that's it. Um, let's see if they've got anything. I always like their website, except for like, it takes forever to load. Okay, so... Okay, so they've got a new, um, new event, Cosplay Pop. So replacing their cosplay parade from previous years, both morning and afternoon sessions on both Saturday and Sunday of Avcon will feature a cosplay pop. Um, cool, that's really fun, that's exciting. Um, it's not a competition, there are no rules on what um, what you used or how your costume was created. You will not be judged um, to show accru accuracy, you don't need to perform a skip. No pressure, no expectations. That's nice, I like it when that. When that happens, um, doo -doo -doo. so yeah, all pre-registrations. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, normally they have a bigger competition. I'm not sure if it's running ahead this year, but normally that's a really fun competition. Um, cool, and I'm just gonna do one more. Um, I'm just going um, with the ones that I know are kind of running this year rather than um, going with everything. So this one's Smash. So this is a Sydney based one. So what's on things to do? Uh, so they don't have uh, their normal cosplay competition or they don't have um, their 
um, or WCS at this point in time. But um, essentially, it's it's pretty similar to what the other the criteria for the other events are. WCS is really fun. Um, so WCS it requires you to have a skit and it's required for pairs. So loading community service. Um, let's see if we can find. Okay. So this is World Cosplay Summit Australia. So Australia won like recently. Yeah. Um, so WCS is actually taking place online this year. So WCS is a massive summit of cosplay that takes place in Japan. Um, and it's really fun to watch. It's uh, got some great prizes. They've done a fantastic job on the event. It's got lots and lots of rules. Um, Let's see if I can find some of them, just so we can have a quick look at them. Okay, so here's, here's just like a general summary. I love this. This is great. Uh, costumes must be handmade. Uh, cosplay duo um, responsible for 75% of the construction. Um, team of two cosplayers uh, has to, yeah, so you have to be a duo and it can't just be you in a wig that changes wigs or anything like that. So um, they must be uh, anime and Japanese characters as well. Um, uh, for this year, it's a video performance. Uh, previously, it's just been held at Smash. Um, yeah, so this is, yeah. Must abide by the terms of so service for YouTube and trip. Twitch trips, yes, yum yum yeah. Um, cool. Either way, that's a basic rundown on competitions and some of their rules and um, everything. So just to give you an idea on which competition might be right for you, whether it's a parade, whether it's just a general competition, whether it's something like WCS, um, have a think about it. You can enter all of them. You're allowed to enter all of them. Um, there is no like restriction or limit on what you can enter. Um, if you can make costumes that quickly, then like more power to you. Um, but yeah, definitely a good place to start is just looking at competitions and just seeing what's actually going to suit you. Like I want to enter WCS one day. I'm yet to find a partner. I'll get there. Don't worry. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next section. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to go over is some of the things to include in your portfolio when you pre present it. So this is my one I did a couple of years ago. I did Azura from Fire Emblem from the new, the dark version. I, the name escapes me. Um, and this was a disguise um, type outfit she had. And look, just generally it looks really simple. Um, so... Either way, so reference images, a huge thing. So the judges won't always have them on hand or they may have the wrong ones or they they just might not be showing everything. Like I had a lot of gradient dyeing on mine, which is only seen in like two seconds of, uh, of the entire of the entire costume. So I also included some concept art because I did draw a little bit of inspiration from here and it does show more like full body um, looks of just generally how the costume should look as well. Um, and this is from Heroes, which isn't exactly what it looks like in the game itself, but eh, oh well. Okay, so I had a lot of like small details in the costume that I created. So I included a lot of close up images um, and progress images to kind of prove that I made it um, and prove that, uh, you know, that it was there, it kind of gave them a reference, something to remind them that this is a cool part um, of the costumes and just some um, just some general points. I love dot points um, in, in portfolios and stuff. I think that reading really big blocks of text takes too much time. Do not put like eight pages worth, they will not have time to read it. And it's exhausting and you lose special points. Like I normally get a couple of photos, a couple of dot points. That normally does me pretty good. Okay, so the main dress, some of the tests that I did, some of the patterning, some of the things that went wrong um, in the costume as well. So I included all of that. And then some just like general parts of the costume. So like 
Uh, this is a small detail that was around the edge. This was another technique that I used. This is how I made the necklace, how I made every single element of it. So uh, yeah, so this is just kind of extending on that, even the inside of the collar um, and like the step-by-step -step on how I created the leg sleeve type thing so that my bells wouldn't fall down. I jingled so much in this costume. Um, so that's a general rundown, like include, in, there's like a bunch of stuff that you can include um, in judging criteria. The main things that you do need um, is like a full list um, of uh, all the reference images, a full list of materials. Uh, some sometimes people include um, photos of key steps in the process, um, a short description on how you made each piece, dot points, no blocks of text, remember that. Um, how much time you spent, it's not necessary. You can take a thousand hours to make a Sailor Scout uniform if you want. In bigger competitions, that's going to make you look worse than better. Lots of hours is good and it's an impressive number more for the audience than it is for the judges. So just something to keep in mind. Um, prepare a short bio as well. Um, so as we saw some of the competitions that you can enter, they will have a um, an MC talking about exactly what's in your costume, consider like the main three points um, and include that in there. Um, uh, you can go with mistakes you made along the way. So not, um, so actually, yeah, we did do that in here. I did have a few mistakes. So with this dyeing process, uh, so it ended up like block lined and then it was all smoothing it out. Uh, so in the judging process, I actually explained um, how I made it smooth from going to, from yeah, from this monstrosity to this beautiful, lovely gradient. I also had um, a dress which was fitted incredibly poorly at one point, um, and then I fixed it. And that actually earned me some extra points um, in a different competition. So that's the general breakdown of what you need to include in your portfolio. So let's get on to the next point. So the next thing I wanted to have a quick look at was some judging criteria. So if you have never entered a competition, um, judging criteria might be something new to you. So every single competition has a set of judging criteria and sometimes they're public and sometimes they're not. So I'm using Supernova's Cosplay Odyssey um, one for the purpose of, uh, of this workshop craft fest thing. Um, just to give you a basic idea on what that can look like. So. It's really important to actually look at these when you are thinking about the costume that you're going to produce for the, for the event and also what you should be focusing on. So 30% of it is craftsmanship. So you do need to have like decent craftsmanship for this particular competition, 30% uh, accuracy. So accuracy with cosplay is like the bare bones of like most criteria is you need to have some sense of accuracy and going away from the design can cost you points. Uh, going away from the design a little bit um, can sometimes give you points. Like if you use something that um, maybe just enhances the costume. Uh, diversity of skills. So diversity of skills is a really interesting point. So with a lot of competitions, you can, competitions and costumes can have such a diverse range of techniques that go into them from prop making, armor making and sewing. I am very much a seamstress and I try and avoid anything that isn't sewing related. But within sewing, there is so many techniques involved that I can still have a wide range and diverse, a wide range and diversity of skills. So, you don't have to do everything. My general my general rule of thumb is do 70% of what you know and 30% something new um, with any competition. So just try and keep that in mind when you are thinking about what costume to put together. Diversity of skill is important um, and it does count for 20% of this. So being able to show that and represent that is something very, very important in a costume. So. 20% stage presence. So Odyssey is a craftsmanship based competition, but stage presence does count for something. So when I saw this, my first thought was, okay, what can I do on stage to make me stand out? So I had in the back of my costume on that Azura costume, I had two fans 
that I brought out and I did like a fan dance. It was really lame. It was really awkward. I didn't take those into the judging room. I didn't make those fans, anything. I just did it there purely for the stage side of things. And I'm pretty sure maybe if the judges are in the comments, that's that may have been what won me that, uh, that round of Odyssey in Adelaide. Um, but yeah, that was, that was one of the, um, one of the things that I looked at. Now there is, um, criteria that goes beyond this. And I actually did an article on this about a year ago, uh, where I talked to a bunch of judges all over Australia about what their, their thoughts are on specific judging criteria that people may not be aware of and stuff to keep in mind when you're actually putting together a costume for a competition. So I've got that here. So this is on my very exciting blog that I haven't posted on in a year. So the quality versus quantity um, of elements. So this is talking about the diversity of skills. So basically uh, you have to do lots of skills, but you have to do them well. It's more, if you do a diverse range of skills, but do them really poorly, they're not going to be going like for you. Like it's not going to work for you. It's going to work against you if anything in a competition. So, so when I asked experienced cosplay judges, um, the overall opinion on what they prioritize, um, it, it will work in favor of the contestant if they have a variety of techniques executed well. So that's, that's basically what I just said. Um, so wow factor. So wow factor is really interesting, uh, with, um, competition. So wow factor is something that makes you stand out from everyone else. And this can be like tiny little thing on your costume, or it can be a huge, big, elaborate thing. So my wow factor for um, Odyssey in Adelaide, that was my fans and dancing up on stage really poorly because no one else really did anything like that. And it was the first round of the competition. So um, having that stage presence aspect, I really honed in on that because I knew my costume wasn't incredibly complex um, compared to other costumes in the event. So I really honed in on that. So some people have just their costume choice is their wow factor. It can be something that they've incorporated. We've had, I think Ardella cosplay a few years ago. She did Glinda Goodwitch. She had this ring that was like on her back and it like had bubbles coming out of it. It was just something incredible to see. They've seen a transport former that had fire come out of their hands. Do not put fire in your costumes, guys. That's like goes against like every policy or if it isn't in the policy, it should be. Uh, do not put fire in your costumes, but you know what I mean. So that's, that's another thing that you can kind of think about, um, think about when you're putting your costume together. Is there anything that can make you stand out that can make you look different? Um, and that can put you apart from everyone else. That's essentially what a wow factor is. So yeah, there's heaps of information here. And if you guys want a link, I will put it in the chat uh, and you guys can go check it out in your own time. I've wrote a lot on this. Um, so some people feel that um, the judge's experience, so if they aren't an armor builder, for example, um, that that may, may impact, that may impact the result and it can. Um, that's one of the reasons why a portfolio is really important and explaining what you've done, explaining how you've done it um, is also really important. So, and it also depends on the types of judges. I highly recommend when you're going into a competition, have a quick look on what the judges' backgrounds are, backgrounds are and make sure you're prepared to talk about things that maybe they don't know about or maybe they know about and you know, you can always learn from them as well and always ask for feedback from the judges as well. Um, and I had one more point. Um, so the Australian cosplay community is like really connected. So most people, if you have been posting groups, if you've been posting your progress, a lot of the judges will probably see that before the event itself. So it can help and hinder you because people know what you've done. You may, might be trying to hide something that you've done, but people know that you changed things or did things differently. Um, it'll all be different and depends on, depends on how you do it. One of the judges could see you ordered this costume off AliExpress and you can't get away with uh, saying that you made it. Uh, that's probably a terrible example, but I hope you understand kind of what I mean. There. 
So that's just a little bit about criteria. So the next thing that I want to go over is some of the things that um, can bring your costume to the next level. So I'm going to see if I can bring out some of my uh, some of my competition worthy costumes and see what you guys think. Okay, so um, so I'm going to go through a couple of elements that are on some of my costumes that can just make it a little bit better and I'm going to compare it to some of my works in progress that also do not look that great um, and just compare the two. So at the moment, so this is my bow for Ari, for Spirit Blossom Ari. Um, so some of the techniques that I've actually used in this, uh, so for example, to keep the bow bouncy, I put horsehair braid and water starch spray in there. I have used um, commercial ribbon, I've created my own tassels. I've done almost 100% of this except for making the bell itself. Now you can take this a step further, you can make the bell, you can 3D print it. Um, and then I always make sure that the back, even if they don't see it, that that looks nice. So all of my edges are nice and finished. There's no hanging threads or anything. There I did it in like these shapes and I've also got horsehair braid on these top ones just to keep it puffy for when um, when it comes, you know, to competition time and, you know, I don't like it getting squashed in the bag. So that's just, that's just one sort of example. So even though the judges may not look at it, what the costume looks like on the inside does matter. So I'm going to show you two costumes that I'm currently working on. Um, just to show you what I do in a normal costume that I wasn't going to enter in a competition and one that I am entering in a competition. Um, so this is the monstrosity that I wouldn't enter in a competition unless I had it completely lined. So if you can see, all of this is got has raw edges. They are very much incomplete. It just looks rotten and messy. Um, and you know, there's this, this is this isn't interlining, so it won't look like this when it's done. Um, but that can actually be really important. I've also done a lot of things to get things to maintain their shape. So like little things that can like impress judges. So for example, is this red piece here? Just I've done it in red just so you guys can see it. Uh, so that's actually a piece of boning. So this sits off my shoulder and it sits slightly off my body, and you can have, have a peek into this like beautiful like brocade lining that I've got. So that's like something that's been thought out in advance. Um, but we're just looking at the inside now. So let's compare this and these horrible ratty edges to something I have done properly and does look really nice. Okay, so this isn't finished, but on the inside you can already tell that this looks a lot more complete. It's all neat and it's flush and it's very pretty to kind of look at even on the inside. And stuff like this is really good to have in your portfolio, showing that this looks really nice on the inside and on the outside. Always looks good. Always using different techniques and different fun things. Like I put a strip of velvet here um, just because I thought it looked pretty and it helped cover my seams. Um, and stuff like that, just making it, making it nice and pretty and Oh, the other option for this particular costume that I had, if I can find it. So you can also, like for example, with a corset, I've got another one here. So this is my Ari one again. So the belt, it would normally be just like a strip of fabric, which is what most people have actually done for this costume. Um, I decided to bone it and also line it as well. So we've got some black lining here. I've also got piping across the top. So that's adding something a little bit extra to the costume. So it didn't need to be included, but this will sit a lot nicer um, and it will kind of give me that tiny waist um, that I want on the silhouette that will kind of bring this costume from a basic costume um, to something that uh, makes people go, oh, okay. So this costume is fully boned and lined. Like you wouldn't expect that from a kimono, but uh, it does happen. <laughs> um, so in this particular case, that's just something that I've done. I've also made a corseted back so I can tighten the hell out of it. Um, yeah, so that's that's just an example. So other things, like if we are talking about like diversity of skills, so sorry, this has just come out of the packing bag. So let me just outline some of, this, some of the techniques 
and stuff that have happened in, happened in here that I would explain to a judge. So this is one of my sleeves for Ari, for Spirit Blossom Ari. So I definitely get points taken off for my uh, for my lack of ironing. So make sure you always you always iron iron your stuff. Uh, but a few of the things that I've done in here that I have done for competition purposes. So I've dyed the fabric, so I've done a gradient dye. I don't know how well you can see that in the video there, but it's got a nice dark blue. That's how dark it gets. I've just applicated over the top. And then it goes nice and light. So gradient dyeing is beautiful. It's a pain in the butt. Um, and the other thing that I've done is I've created all the shapes. I've created the pattern myself. And I've also done um, applique. So that's all like the rimming around the edge and it takes a really long time to do. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I've done to create this, to create this. And I would say that this is on, like this, this would be more impressive to me than buying the sleeve or buying a print and then tr doing a transfer of it just because there's more effort involved and it's got this beautiful look to it. Um, the final, the final product. Now that's me personally, and that's just something that's within my skill set, And that's why I've decided to do it this way. I hate myself for doing it this way at the moment. Um, but that's just something that I have personally decided to do in this costume. Um, and that kind of brings it from like that basic to brilliant. Yeah, that kind of works. I made a face there. I don't know what he saw it, but it was a really good face. Um, some of the other things that um, you need to consider when actually making your costume. Oh, you can see the gradient a little bit nicer on this side. Yay! Doo -doo. Um, but even my inside looks nice. Um, I always think that that helps. Like you would be surprised how many judges in a pre-judging session will actually flip seams. And I think it's really important that um, you always have things finished. Things always need to be finished, like ironed, not like what I've done right now under this. So something that's really important um, to some judges is how the silhouette works. So with this, so this is uh, a bow for Amber from Genshin Impact, and her bow just defies gravity. So it like sticks up and it's nobody's business. So I've achieved this, um, instead of just doing a basic bow, for example, or putting wire in it, um, which is one way that you can do it to create that like popped effect to get that perfect silhouette I have um, actually used interfacing and starch spray. So I'm going to explain on my other panel uh, that I've got a craft fest this weekend about how I did this a little bit more um, but this to me is 1A it's right in my skill set and this is something I'm very comfortable doing um, and B, it just achieves that silhouette and it gets those accuracy, those precious, precious accuracy points that you need in competition. So um, either way, that's just me running um, over a few costumes. Um, I will go grab another. So, going into diversity of skills again so this is another thing so this is more like wig work so this is for Ari as well and it does demonstrate a similar skill to what I did with the sleeves but dyeing the wig and dyeing the ends so you with this costume I've seen it a few times you don't need to dye the ends um, but it looks stunning when you do and it kind of lifts that costume from zero to here if I did this again I would choose a better non AliExpress wig I would go for like higher quality sort of wig um, but I'd never dyed a wig before and I didn't want to waste like a couple hundred dollars on a beautiful art wig um, and that's something that can also kind of lift your costume just making sure that all those small elements are there and that it looks well accomplished if this was one solid line I don't think that this would get the points it has to be done reasonably well and I think I would still lose points on this just because of how shiny the wig is um, and I haven't styled it obviously yet so that's another thing that I've kind of got to, got to work on with this costume. So what you can do with competition costumes is 
if you are being creative, you, you can be a little bit creative with what you do is what I'm saying. So with, this is my, um, so I'm doing Kasumi from Persona 5. Um, so her like Phantom V Thieves outfit. So what I've decided to do is on the inside, I've used a sequin fabric. So on the outside, it looks exactly like what her leather coat would, but on the inside, I've got this beauty, beautiful sparkling fabric. And what I want to do with this is take it even a, a step further and cover it in rose petals, essentially. She has all these roses in her, like, um, her uh, special move. Um, and I would put these on fishing line and I would let it, like, stroll behind me. Um, that's just something that I would do from, like, a creative perspective. Um, I've done a lot of things that kind of reflect that in this costume. So, for example, I've also done the lining in a red rose, which you're not going to see at all, but it's going to look really nice on the inside and it's going to be nice and soft kind of on my skin and stuff. So, yeah, this is all work in progress um, costumes and hopefully it all does exactly what I want in the end. So that's been a lot of me rambling about costumes. Um, a lot of the time when you're entering a competition with uh, cosplay, you just want to make sure that everything is finished nicely and that you're using a range of techniques that A, work for you and B, show some level of skill. Like for example, I'm basting, like hand basting absolutely everything on this costume because it won't look good without it. Um, and I always say when going into a competition, imagine you're going to be going up against somebody that uses, is doing the exact same costume of, as you. Now, how are you going to make that stand out from them? So you can do it with the techniques that you do. You can do it with the uh, range of skills that you use. You can even do it with your fabric choices. It's all about, with competition, a lot of the time it's about standing out in the right way. And you want to make sure that you do that with your costumes. So that's it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this panel. And if you have any questions, don't forget to find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter. I'm kind of a bit of everywhere. I started a TikTok today. Um, either way, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to tell us in the comments with, uh, who your number one anime waifu is for a chance to win a $50 Mad Men voucher. Thank you so much. Mad Men, thank you again for CrossPress for having me. I'll be around in the comments. Uh, for a little bit to answer your questions. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye!